Hello, welcome. This is Children's Liturgy of the Word for the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And as usual, I have many Father Matt with me, and we're going to vest him to say Mass, put on the proper clothing for him to wear to say Mass for the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And remember, we talked about this last week. He has this white garment on, an alb that covers shoulders to ankles, and then he has his rope belt, the cincture that he wears. And then, once he has that on, then he'll put on the rest of the vestments. Remember, ordinary time, we're in green, right? So here's the green stole. You got it. And here's the green Yes, chasuble to put on so that he'll be properly vested to say Mass for us. Now you think about these colors that we use for the different vestments. I know I've talked about it a little bit, and when we change up, I'll give you a little more information on the times that we change up. But the green, green is kind of a summer color, isn't it? So you look out and you see the green grass and the green leaves on the trees, and green leaves with the flowers and everything that goes on. And it's a sign of growth, isn't it? Because the plants start out little and then they grow big. Um, think about your mom and dad's garden if they have one of the plants that are out there and they grow. And, and the green part of it's part of that growth. And so green is kind of a sign for us. We use ordinary time to listen to the words of the gospel, the words of the readings that are shared with us, and then we listen to the homily, and hopefully we'll be able to hear little pieces of things that will help us to grow in our faith, grow in holiness, as we say at our parishes, is to grow in our relationship with Jesus and our love of Jesus so that we can come closer and closer to him so that we can spend eternity in heaven. So there we are. Father Matt, mini Father Matt, vested and ready for the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. So I kind of moved things around a little bit in the sacristy so we could see the actual vestments that we're using. And I wanted to share some little pieces on there. So here is the actual chasuble that Father would wear for Mass in Ordinary Time. And notice the stripes that are on here. These have a special name, they're called clavi. Really doesn't matter if you know that or not, but those are the stripes. And what they make up is a representation of the cross of Jesus Christ. And remember that when Father says the Mass, he's speaking in the person of Jesus, especially when he consecrates the bread and the wine into the body and blood of Jesus. And these are kind of shiny. They're very nice. They have uh, some neat patterns in the material and everything. And they're very festive. And the stole we keep right along with them. So everything's together. So there's that. We also have the deacon vestment. And I wanted to share kind of a neat story about the deacon vestment. Again, here's the deacon stole. And you may remember I've told you before that the deacon stole and how it's worn. So it'll go over my left shoulder and down my right side like that. But more importantly, here's this vestment that the deacon wears. It's not a chasuble though. It's a vestment called a dalmatic. And so dalmatic goes back to ancient Roman times. It was the clothing of a working person. It has Sleeves. Remember we said that the chasuble is just a piece of cloth with a hole in it? Well, this vestment for the deacons actually has sleeves on it. And it too has these very decorative stripes. And these stripes, notice there's two that go down and two that go across. And they have kind of a special meaning for the deacon. And it goes back to a long time ago in Rome, the Pope, who was there in Rome, had 12 deacons that worked with him. And what the deacons would do 
is to uh, take care of all the things for Mass, but they would also distribute Holy Communion to those who couldn't be at the Mass that the Pope said at the time. Well, the Romans at the time didn't really like Catholics, and so they captured the Pope and all 12 deacons. The Pope and 11 of the deacons were martyred. They died for the faith the next day. But the Romans kept one of the deacons and told him to go out and find the wealth of the church and bring it back to them. And so this deacon's name was Lawrence. And Lawrence went out and he spent the whole night and he gathered up all the poor people and the widows and the orphans and the cripples in Rome and brought them all together and took them to the Romans. And he said, here is the wealth of the church. Of course, they were th the Romans were thinking about all those really nice chalices and ciborium, plus whatever gifts were donated to the church to help with the poor and things like that. But that's not what they got, is it? So they got pretty angry. So what did they do? They took Lawrence and they grilled him to death. He was on, the, on a grill and being cooked, literally. And so St. Lawrence is the um, um, patron saint of chefs, and he's also the patron saint of comedians. Chefs, because he was actually cooked to death. And when you look at the Dalmatic, you see the grill marks from St. Lawrence. And so that's kind of a neat thing to think about whenever you see the deacon in his proper vestment, that that's what he's wearing. He's signifying that sacrifice that St. Lawrence made for the church. Now, St. Lawrence was also the patron saint of comedians because while he was being tortured to death on the grill, he said to his people who were torturing him that this site is done, you need to turn me over. So it's kind of a neat story. And oddly enough, on the back of the Dalmatic are the grill marks as well. So there we have just a little bit of a story. You get to see the actual vestments that we're using at Mass and a little story behind each of them. So there we are. Okay, here I am at the, do you remember what we call this? The Ambo. The Ambo is where the Word of God is proclaimed from in our churches. And I have the lectionary right in front of me, which has the readings that we use for each Mass. So the Ambo and the lectionary. Now remember, I, I mentioned last week that I was going to walk through all those responses again to kind of refresh them in your member, memory. So the deacon will carry the book of the Gospels to the Ambo, and there will be a song being sung at Mass. And do you remember that song? It's the Alleluia. So there's various forms of it and all that, and there's a little verse that goes along with it, and we sing Alleluia. And Alleluia is a special word from the Hebrew that means literally praise God. Hallel is the first part, or Alle, which means praise, and then we, um, Hallel Yah. Yah is short for Yahweh, which is the name for God in our sacred scripture. So praise God when we say Alleluia. Praise God. Alleluia. So once the Alleluia is done, the deacon will fold his hands and look at you and say, the Lord be with you. And your response is, yes, and with your spirit. And he'll say a reading from the Holy Gospel, in this case, according to Matthew. But remember, it could be Matthew, Mark or Luke or John, depending on the time of year and what year it is. And he makes a cross on the book, and then he comes up to his forehead, and remember the little prayer that goes with it? May the message of this Holy Gospel be in my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. And then he'll read through the Gospel reading and say, the Gospel of the Lord, and our response for that from there is, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, 
Lord Jesus Christ. So let's begin it without all of the explanation. How about that? The Alleluia is over. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me also welcomes the one who sent me. Anyone who welcomes a prophet just because the person is a prophet will be given the name, the same reward as the prophet. Anyone who welcomes a good person just because that person is good will be given the same reward as a good person. And anyone who gives one of my most humble followers a cup of cool water just because that person is my follower will surely be rewarded. The Gospel of the Lord. So there's our Gospel for this particular Sunday, the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And it's kind of a neat thing because it's telling you, telling me, telling all of us that we need to treat each other with a lot of respect, don't we? We don't want to have infighting among folks in our families or folks in our church or folks in our community, in our neighborhoods, because those people are Jesus' brothers and sisters, God's sons and daughters. And so we want to treat everyone with that in mind and love them with that in mind. Because, hey, even if you don't like that person, guess what? If they live a life according to sacred scripture and have a relationship with Jesus, they will probably share heaven with you. And at that point in time, you'll like them, you'll love them more than anyone you've ever loved. Because that's the way heaven will be. We'll love everyone, even if we didn't particularly care for them here on earth. So Jesus is talking about the idea of welcoming a prophet. A prophet is someone who shares the good news, right? And you can be a prophet, can't you? You can share the good news of Jesus. Just the love of Jesus. And it might just be where you tell someone, you know, I know you're having a tough time, but always remember that Jesus loves you. Can you imagine saying that to someone? And it talks about welcoming a good person. Well, a person isn't good just on their own. They can't be good just on their own. It takes the working of the Holy Spirit, the working of God the Father, and the working of Jesus Christ inside them to make them what we would call a good person. We can't do that on our own. We need help, don't we? We sure do. And so why we have baptism, why we have the other sacraments, that's a way to bring Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity inside us to help us to be good people. And someone who welcomes a good person, I would think is also pretty much a good person too, wouldn't you? Welcoming means to love them, to take care of them, maybe offer them food if they need it, or rest if they need it, or whatever it is. There's all kinds of ways you can look at that. But welcoming someone. And then the final one is, if anyone gives, anyone who gives one of my humble followers a cup of cool water. So we're talking about something that when you get to the age of confirmation, we do works of mercy. We give drink to the thirsty. We give food to the hungry. We give clothing to those who don't have clothing. Those are works of mercy that we do, and we try to learn about them more as we're preparing for confirmation. But that doesn't mean we can't do them now, does it? So when someone is working out in the yard, you know, maybe, maybe mom or dad is out mowing the yard, how would it be if you got a bottle of nice cool water and took it to them? Said, so you look hot. Have a cup of, have some water. And that would be just a great thing to go out of our way and do. And those are, that's a work of mercy. That's something that Jesus wants us to try to do. So there we have our gospel, a little bit of a insight to that.
we learned a little bit about vestments here too, didn't we? So that's kind of an important thing. And next week we'll have the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and there'll be something new to learn there. So let's close with our blessing. The Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with kindness and bring you peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Hey, did you remember to make the sign of the cross when I gave you the blessing, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If you didn't, catch it next time, okay? And I'll see you next week. Show.